Hello everybody, my name is Olivier Archer, and this is another behind-the-scenes video of Zango Blast. Um, I actually made some updates on it recently, so there should be an update coming to the App Store. So check that out, I did a lot of fixes and stuff, so all your grievances should be quelled, I guess. Alright, today's episode I'm going to show you a little bit of the uh, cell shading effect. Ooh, the lines. You must be thinking, what? How do you have the cell shading effect? There are no post processes in UDK Mobile. Like, yes, sir, you are correct. There are no post processes in UDK Mobile. However, the lines themselves are actually just geometry. They are a model themselves. They are actually the model of the object scaled up a bit and, um, nor uh, and have the normals flipped so that they're kind of inverted. Ooh, the magic is broken. The magic is broken. See, I showed you like this. Uh, normally, you should actually import the model with the outlines attached uh, because if you have it like this, that's two draw calls and that's not very performance. Uh, it's not good for performance, basically. And... Um, yeah, also it's two textures to everything. So you get the increased poly count plus increased draw call and stuff. Let me just put that back. And then it's all good like that. Uh, you should actually just have it like this. For example, this is a block. It's all one model with the outline, as you can see. And it's been UV mapped. It's all everything. The. Um, the you see those little boxes in the right hand corner on the top that is actually the line so they just take that spot of black so the lines become black and that's about it it's pretty simple you just in your 3d program you make your model once it's been unwrapped and everything you just um uh clone it scale it up a bit flip the normals give the new model a black texture, then you attach it, then you move the UVs into the black section, and then voila, you should be done. Export it into UDK, add the textures, all is good. Uh, if you have any more questions about that, I can show you more, just let me know. And that's how you do it. Simple and it works well. Look, works for the boxes, the arrows, but they all have it as um, one to save uh, performance. The cannons just to show you how not to do it and also how it's made. Um, another thing that I would like to show you is level loading and transitioning in uh, the UDK. Uh, when I was learning how to use the UDK, this was a scary thing for me and I had no idea how to do it but I managed to figure it out and so I'll share. It's actually the somewhat the most organized part of my kismet. So in theory, when the game starts, ooh, choppiness. Uh, when the game starts, uh, you're in the menu, which is here, and you're looking at that. You press play, you go to the level select, and then you go to the level select, and then these boxes fall down. And then there are the buttons. So when you press, for example, when you press button number one, this activates a sequence, a remote sequence that says, uh, tells the game to prepare a map change. It prepares a loading map. My loading map is actually just an empty map, and it, all it does is tell activate an event loading when it's when it's loaded. So it activates other things. It's very simple. It's an empty map. It loads instantly. There should be no actors or anything in it. Just that kismet. Uh, I don't know if my method is the most or orthodox way of doing it, but it works very well for me. So you have your prepare map change. You commit the map change. Then you have a forest garbage collection. This is important, especially for restarting, because it just removes all the other stuff that you no longer need for, for the new level. So it kind of cleans up stuff. And then you prepare the map change for um, level one, and then you commit it. This extra stuff I have added is for the loading slides. 
I used buttons to do it because uh, they'll scale better on the iPad, iPhone. Uh, draw image is just not doing it for me. All right, so that's how you load the first level. It's uh, these five nodes, and it will transition you. Also, an interesting thing about the loading level, I have a player start that's facing towards the sky. I'll show it to you. So the loading screen actually is this area. You're looking out at this sky. Uh, I did that on purpose because it looks nice. So every time you load, it goes to the loading screen. It goes to this player start. So remember that. It, uh, all the levels need a player start. All right, back to the kismet. So that's how it works. I know it's not too confusing. So all right, you're back on the menu. Uh, you're, you're on the level, and you want to go back to the menu. <coughs> Sorry about that. So when you go to click the main menu button on in the level, it loads the loading level again, and then it does a force garbage collection, and then you have to set a camera target back to where you want to go, so that's here. Because uh, the menu is always kind of loaded, we, that's why there's such an aggressive cull on it, so that way when you're far away from it, it just disappears. Wait, it should disappear. Here we go. And it just disappears. That's for performance reasons. Um, this reason is, the reason it's like this is because the menu level is a persistent level, so it's always loaded, so you can't just load it again. So what we do is we go to the loading screen to tell uh, the game to remove the old level, to do the forest garbage collection, and once it's done that, well, while it's doing that, it um, goes back to the main menu, which is already loaded and waiting. If you want to restart a level, uh, after you press the restart button, you load the loading level. Yes, this loading level is very minimalistic, but very useful. You commit the map change. You do a forced garbage collection. This is very important here because it resets everything. And then you reload the level again. This is some stuff that I optimized, so I don't need it anymore. And if you want to do the next level, it's the same thing. You prepare the loading level, you commit it, you do a forced garbage collection to remove all the other stuff that was there before. Then you prepare the map change of the new level, and then you commit it, and then that's it. It's a system that I've used. Uh, it's worked very well. I've done it for all the levels, and yeah. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. I will do some more videos. I got a few requests. Uh, in the next video, I'll probably show you how the ball is shot and anything else that gets requested. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bizango Blast is on the App Store. The update's coming soon. Yeah, have a good day.